I feel at at the 135 would probably be Javante Tank Davis. Mm -hmm. But the most skillful fighter, skillful fighter at 135 would be hands down Shakur Stevens. Floyd Mayweather has just taken brutal shots at Gervonta Davis on live. Moreover, Floyd is set to make his return to the ring this summer in a rematch against John Gotti III, the grandson of the infamous late mob boss. Alongside the bout poster, Floyd posted a message on Instagram saying, Unfinished business. August 24th, Mayweather views Gotti the third rematch in Mexico City. This is something you don't want to miss. When the 47-year-old met Gotti III for the first time in June 2023, the bout ended in mayhem as a riot broke out as spectators flooded the ring. They were originally scheduled to meet again on Super Bowl weekend in Las Vegas. However, the fight will now take place in Mexico on August 24th. In addition to this, Floyd recently weighed in on the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight. At first, he refrained from criticizing the fight. The five-weight world champion even defended both Paul and Tyson, commending the YouTuber for his innovative approach. Floyd said, what he's doing against Mike Tyson is kind of cool. If he can continue to steal money and they match him the way they match him, I can't knock his hustle. Considering that Tyson postponed the fight for four months due to a stomach ulcer, Paul's ability to market the event has been remarkable. In discussing his strategies before a previous bout, the influencer encouraged professional fighters to actively promote themselves to achieve similar financial success. He said, We live in a different boxing world now, in a different digital age in general, and it's the fighter's responsibility now to promote themselves. And once they realize that, and realize instead of sitting around on the weekend and playing video games in between the training sessions, they have to be on TikTok and making YouTube videos. Just hustle. On the other hand, we know that May Weather is celebrated for his unparalleled defensive prowess and holds the record as the most precise puncher in the CompuBox era. The multiple world champion had a ton of excellent opponents, and great opponents are necessary for greatness. When it comes to the toughest opponent he's ever encountered, money refers to none other than his rival in the battle for greatness, Manny Pacquiao. He elaborated on this during his appearance on the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast. He said, The best fighter I ever fought probably was Manny Pacquiao. It's because of his movement. He's a hell of a fighter, and I can see why he won so many fights, and I can see why he's going down as a Hall of Famer. It's just certain moves he makes. Fans won't be shocked to hear this, as the Filipino sensation is destined to be remembered as one of the all-time greats in boxing history. Pacquiao, a world champion across an unprecedented eight weight divisions, achieved 13 world title victories and successfully defended his title 10 times. No other fighter has come close to matching these remarkable feats. It's widely acknowledged that Pacquiao was beyond his prime during his 2015 clash with Mayweather. This added to the frustration, as the bout would have been monumental if it had occurred when initially proposed in 2009. The American fighter's meticulously honed defense was the highlight of the match, leading him to secure a unanimous victory in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Floyd recently talked about the best fighters in the current era. Given his position, he holds valuable insights on the subject and was recently approached by Boxing Maine to share his perspective on who currently reigns as the pound-for-pound -pound king. He highlighted a few names that he believes are near the summit. Question. Right now, in your opinion, who's the best fighter in the world? At one at one particular time, I did I did talk about uh, I did say Terence Crawford. Okay. Now, but what are we rating these fighters on? To, to what are we rating these fighters on? Floyd Mayweather's eyeball test. I look, I look at it like this: Tank Tank did the same thing Terence Crawford did to um to Gamboa. So now you have to now. It, uh, so Gamboa was much younger at the time. But guess what? There's a difference because Terrence Crawford is a much bigger fighter than then Gervonta. Moreover, Floyd mentioned that Tank Davis could be considered among the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound fighters, emphasizing that Davis should be included somewhere in that ranking. He also acknowledged Canelo's remarkable achievement of moving up to light heavyweight and becoming the champion, something Floyd hadn't anticipated Canelo would accomplish. Ultimately, Floyd decided to place Terence Crawford at the top of his pound-for-pound -pound list, considering him the number one fighter at that moment. We can put Tank up there in the top 10 in pound for pound. He has to be somewhere in pound for pound. And Canelo done something that is amazing when Canelo was able to go to light heavyweight and uh, become light heavyweight champion, something that I didn't even see him going up that heavy and he, and he did that. So 
But as of right now, I have to put Terrence Crawford as number one. Since handily defeating Errol Spence Jr. in July of last year, Crawford has not engaged in combat. He now holds the four major welterweight championships as a result of that victory. The following bout, on August 3rd, he plans to try his hand at 154 pounds. Israel Madrimov will be his opponent at the new weight. If he manages to overcome that challenge, there's a strong desire among fans to witness him square off against Saul Canelo Alvarez. While the weight gap between these two titans could pose a significant obstacle, it remains a potential path for him to solidify his position as the undisputed pound-for-pound -pound champion. We know that Gervonta Davis reaffirmed his status as a boxing luminary with a decisive eighth-round knockout victory over Frank Martin. This commanding performance silenced any lingering doubts among critics who had questioned his form following a year-long absence. Davis appears steadfast in his commitment to the lightweight division, showing no inclination to move up in weight. His immediate plans likely include pursuing title unification at 135 pounds with an eye towards achieving undisputed champion status as the ultimate objective. Among the remaining champions in his weight class are Vasyl Lomachenko, Shakur Stevenson, and Dennis Berenchik. In the realm of potential opponents for Tank, one name continues to gain traction. Vasyl Lomachenko, the esteemed two-time Olympic gold medalist and boxing virtuoso. While the bout remains in the negotiation phase, enthusiasts speculate fervently on its potential outcome. Will Lomachenko succumb like so many before him to Davis's relentless aggression? Or could the Ukrainian maestro defy expectations, closing his illustrious career with a monumental victory? Amidst these ponderings, insights from those who have shared the ring with both champions become invaluable. Recently, Fight Hype seized the chance to interview Robert Merriweather III, a sparring partner of Gervonta Davis, offering a unique perspective on the matter. The journalist questioned Merriweather, so they're talking about Gervonta versus Lomachenko. I mean, obviously, you've been in the ring with Tank. Is Lomachenko a tougher fight? He openly acknowledged the formidable skills of Vasyl Lomachenko in the ring. Merriweather speculated that despite facing formidable opponents in the past, there was a possibility that Gervonta Davis could rise above them in resilience. Nonetheless, he remained steadfast in his choice of Davis for the victory. What led him to this conclusion? I mean, there's a lot of things that you still haven't seen, suggested Robert Merriweather. He further added, Gervonta has the IQ like people don't see that he has IQ in the ring. It's not. It's not just a power, a power punch, and he's not going to go out there and just throw everything. He's not. It's not like that. He sets up his shots, and he knows when to throw where to throw it, and he's quick, he's fast. Therefore, the Baltimore native appears poised to claim victory. However, the 19-year-old rising star harbors reservations. He believes that unlike his previous bout with Frank Martin, his upcoming clash against Lomachenko could extend beyond the norm. This skepticism stems from Davis's reputation as a slow starter, potentially taking it easy in the initial rounds. Compounding this issue, Merriweather points out that the Matrix employs a similar strategy in his fights. So we'll see when it comes up, he concluded. Certainly, the Davis-Loma duo holds promise for a substantial payday. For many observers, it evokes memories of the legendary 1982 clash between Aaron, the Eagle Prior, and the esteemed Alexis Arguello. When it comes to Gervonta Davis, one thing stands out clearly, his dominance and power. With an impressive track record of finishing nearly 93% of his fights with knockouts, he has established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the ring. On the opposing side stands a seasoned 36-year-old veteran known more for his strategic prowess than his knockout record of 12 wins. This cunning Ukrainian may boast a superior superior amateur background, but when it comes to the bright lights and substantial purses of professional boxing, Davis reigns supreme. Explaining the difference, Stephen A. Smith recently said, Lomachenko is a brilliant, brilliant tactician and a brilliant boxer whose footwork is magnificent, very experienced, etc., etc. My issue with Lomachenko is that I don't know if Lomachenko has the power to stop Gervonta Davis, which means that we'd basically be watching the fight to see if he will outbox Gervonta or if he'll survive. In essence, Loma could potentially extend the fight against Tank by evading traps and avoiding the ropes. However, this strategy may not hold indefinitely, considering he's not the same prime Lomachenko anymore. With his tendency to move around the ring, there's a risk of him tiring out over time. Therefore, the Olympic medalist must strategize with his team moving forward. Meanwhile, Tank's co-trainer, Kenny Ellis, confidently predicts a knockout victory, boldly declaring that Loma won't make it to the 12th round. Ellis has started to watch Loma's fights in an effort to develop a strong enough strategy that will result in not only a win, but a knockout. Ellis commented on social media, Phase 3 studying Lomachenko. Why all of a sudden are these Lomachenko highlight videos popping up? Are they supposed to be intimidating or something? He won't see the 12th with Gervonta Davis. It would certainly mark a significant achievement for 29-year-old Tank if he were to be the first to knock out or defeat Lomachenko decisively. However, the question remains, can Lomachenko frustrate, outmaneuver, and confound Tank as he has done with numerous other opponents? Loma, with a record of 18-3, has faced formidable punchers in the past without ever being seriously threatened. Yet, Tank's blend
blend of skill and renowned power adds another layer of intrigue to this potential Southpaw versus Southpaw clash. Loma also possesses considerable power. His precision and the relentless accumulation of his punches can inflict significant damage. It would certainly be astonishing if Loma managed to stop Tank. Let's remain hopeful that this bout materializes. It's a fight we all eagerly anticipate, regardless of the outcome. On the other hand, Shakur Stevenson is preparing to defend his own title against Artem Haratunian in the upcoming month. Fans are also eager to see Shakur and Tank face off next. But James Tony, a three-weight world champion and Hall of Famer, cautioned Shakur against such a risky move in an interview with Fight Hub TV. James stated that it could be a good fight and acknowledged Shakur Stevenson as a good fighter, but he believed Stevenson wasn't ready for such a challenge. He criticized so-called boxing experts, asserting they didn't know anything about the sport. James emphasized that Shakur was still a young fighter who needed time to develop before taking on such significant matches. According to him, Tank had the momentum, and facing him now would be detrimental for Shakur, potentially ruining his career, similar to what Crawford did to Errol Spence Jr. Good win. Good fight, but you know what? Shakur Stevens is a good fighter, but Shakur Stevens ain't ready for that. He's not hey, ready? Look, 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 everybody in boxing, y'all young guy, y'all young so-called experts, y'all don't know shit about boxing. Y'all see something and write about it? No, it don't work that way. You know, my man, um, he uh, secured young fighter, young, let him develop. And then when it's time, he made that move. But right now, he can get the heat of the momentum. He can get the momentum in the moment. It ain't bad for him, for sure. He can get his whole career, like, uh, like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Devin Haney, Javante Davis. No, the Spence. I told everybody Spence, he wasn't ready. He's your wife for him. On the flip side, Tim Bradley asserts that facing Vasily Lomachenko poses the toughest challenge yet for Gervonta Davis. According to Bradley, Davis must secure a knockout to emerge victorious since outboxing Lomachenko for a decision win seems improbable. It's a stark scenario. Davis either stops Lomachenko or faces defeat on the judges' scorecards. Tank Davis finds himself trailing in his bouts, a perilous position against Lomachenko. Lomachenko excels when he's in the lead, adept at maintaining his advantage while avoiding reckless swings aimed for a knockout. When they square off, in a unification bout in November, Bradley believes that Lomachenko will bring something that Tank Davis has never experienced in his lengthy career. If Davis can make a connection, the WBA lightweight champion has the potential to win, but Bradley is unsure. Bradley said, I don't think Loma is over the hill. Tank is going to have to knock him out. He's going to have to knock him out because Loma can get ahead on the scorecards. In his recent bouts against George Kambosos Jr. and Devin Haney, Lomachenko showed he still had plenty left in the tank. He decisively defeated Kambosos Jr. with a stoppage and narrowly lost to Haney in a contentious decision that sparked debate among fans and analysts alike. Bradley continued, It would be funny to see the game plan of Tank and what he would do. If Tank is coming forward, firing combinations, coming in behind that jab, he can control Loma. But if he sits back and tries to use that high guard and nothing in between, Loma is going to be able to push him back. When Tank Davis steps up with aggressive tactics, the outcome mirrors his moments of retreat. Lomachenko struggled against opponents like Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, and Orlando Salido, who possessed the agility to close the distance. In contrast, Tank's style resembles that of Guillermo Rigondo, rooted and vulnerable. Bradley added, Loma is not running. He's going to stay in the vicinity. He's going to stay in close proximity. He's going to be outside the reach. Outside. Getting in, outside the reach, and he's going to play with the distance. In every bout, Loma consistently employs his trademark movement, a strategy that proved decisive in his victory over George Cambosos Jr. last May. Throughout that match, Lomachenko adeptly entered, landed precise strikes, and swiftly evaded Cambosos' aggression. Swings. This tactical approach is anticipated to be similarly effective against Tank Davis, given his tendencies are equally foreseeable. According to Bradley, I just think Loma brings something Tank has never seen before. Loma will be the hardest fighter Tank has ever fought, mentally skillful, experienced, even with age. Every legendary fighter has one more good fight in them. They're just waiting for the opportunity to show it. Lomachenko clearly outshines the caliber of opponents Tank has faced. Tank's past opponents have largely consisted of aging fighters and B-list sluggers, such as Ryan Garcia, Frank Martin, Isaac Cruz, and Rolando Raleigh Romero. Notably, Tank has yet to step into the ring with technically skilled boxers, a strategic choice likely influenced by his management's preference to avoid being outboxed. I think Tank is the right guy for him. Loma knows he's got to go down to the ocean. Loma, you're going to have to go down to the bottom of the ocean, the deepest part of the ocean to beat Tank. Come back up and do it again if you're going to beat Tank because Tank is younger and stronger, said Bradley. Lomachenko finds motivation in many opponents, but facing Tank Davis is the pinnacle. For seven years, Loma has yearned 
yearned for the showdown, and now he finally has the opportunity to make it happen. Tank Davis's management's decision to wait until Lomachenko reached 36 years old is indicative of their respect for his skill and experience. It suggests they believed Tank wasn't ready to win against Lomachenko until this point, leading them to postpone the fight due to their lack of confidence in Tank's ability. In the meantime, the feud between Floyd Mayweather and Tank Davis is escalating. Recently, Floyd took some really brutal shots at Tank, making things more serious between them. Given their apparent disagreement, Floyd may have broken one of the unwritten rules of boxing in order to vent his frustration on Davis. It's frowned upon in boxing to share videos from private sparring sessions. Sparring holds a revered place in the sport, where even lesser-known fighters can outshine the famous ones at times. These sessions prioritize learning and development, typically away from public view. Sometimes, fierce competitors will disobey this unspoken guideline. Mayweather appears to have arrived at a crossroads with his once protege. Over the last few months, the two have exchanged jabs on social platforms, with Mayweather's latest jab coinciding with Davis's surge in popularity. Davis made a remarkable comeback to the ring following a 14-month hiatus due to serving time in prison. He secured a decisive victory against Frank Martin, underscoring his enduring dominance in the boxing arena. But Mayweather stirred the boxing world on June 17th by unveiling long-hidden footage from a sparring session between Devin Haney and Davis, where Haney appeared to dominate. This intriguing session took place a decade ago in Mayweather's gym, and the timing of its release by Mayweather has sparked considerable interest and speculation. <laughs> Former champions such as Badu Jack and Adrian Broner are prominently featured on the ring apron in the video, while Mayweather takes center stage in the ring with aspiring champions, alternating between referee and hype man roles. Many people responded angrily to Mayweather once the video was made public, believing it to be the legendary boxer's way of jabbing at Davis. Meanwhile, Devin's father Bill Haney said that Mayweather had leaked the material back in May, since Mayweather and Bill Haney just got into a heated argument on a live Instagram video that included some bizarre name-calling. It's difficult to guess what his long-term objectives are. Michael Fox, a professional boxer, had harsh words for Mayweather. He said, Floyd released Tank and Haney sparring when he spent his whole career not letting people record his sessions. That's corny. Isha Smith, a former fighter and close friend of Mayweather, was questioned about his thoughts on Mayweather posting the footage. Smith's criticism was far more detailed. Mayweather's recent decision to replace Mayweather Promotions president Leonard Ellerby with Richard Schaefer was one of the more unexpected moves. Smith claims that Mayweather took this action as payback for Ellerby's ongoing back of Davis. Smith said, What do I think about the Tank and Devin sparring video? Absolutely nothing. It's sparring. I felt the same way when Paul Spadafora had a good day against FM. Sh happens. Why are we putting so much stock in sparring? Smith further added, Floyd is such a petty ass individual. I have no insight, but I've known that motherfucker for over three decades. The company has been failing, and no change from him. It was always them two, Floyd and Leonard, together like sugar on grits. Floyd told Leonard to pick a side. When he didn't, he chose to do some petty and blindside that man. This wasn't calculated and a firing. It was a petty act firing from one side. If Mayweather steps away from guiding Davis's career, he might find himself excluded from future decisions. Speculation suggests Mayweather's recent posting of the sparring session could cast Davis in a negative light. Although it seems doubtful that they will fight because of their age gap, fans and analysts alike find the concept intriguing. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.